When it comes to blood and guts, body counts, gratuitous nudity, and cheering on bad guys despite their rather, you know, murderous tendencies, horror fans simply cannot get enough. So much so that the constant demand for horror offerings has led to many long-standing franchises dominating the genre over the years, as familiar faces and familiar premises are revisited time and time again. Now, while the whole concept of an ongoing series is something that lends itself well to horror, and oh boy, do we love a return, it doesn't take a genius to realize that sometimes these franchises become their own worst enemies. Much like me at the all-you-can-eat buffet table with bread rolls shoved into my purse, they just don't know when to quit. Looking back at some of the biggest bads out there, there are plenty of times when they could have called it a day and remain legendary titles in their own right, without a slew of sequels mucking up the franchise waters and their good, established names. Honestly, for some of them, that may even have meant not becoming a franchise in the first place. I am the horror icon Ash from What Culture, and these are the eight exact moments classic horror franchises should have come to an end. 8. Jaws ends with Brody rescuing his sons. For some reason, 1978's Jaws 2 always tends to get bogged down as an awful sequel that tarnished its predecessor. I mean, is Jaws 2 as good as Steven Spielberg's Jaws? Of course not. But Jaws 2 is a perfectly good movie on its own merits, and it works as a fine sequel to the 1975 offering. It also happens to be the moment that the Jaws franchise should have come to a close. As Chief Brody sails to the rescue to protect his sons and their pals from the threat of a giant great white shark, that is the moment where the Jaws series should have finished, with Brody electrocuting the shark, saving the kids, and then sailing off into the distance. Instead, Jaws 2 would lead to Jaws 3D, which led to Jaws The Revenge. For the latter two films, they saw the awful 3D of the 80s used, and The Revenge in particular was a bonkers feature that saw a shark have a grudge against the Brody family, despite each and every prior shark being killed off. Considering just how brilliant the first two movies were, the Jaws franchise delivered two utter stinkers with its final outings. 7. Friday the 13th ends with Pamela's decapitation. Hey, who doesn't love a bit of Jason Takes Manhattan or a chuckle-heavy rewatch of Jason X? The Friday the 13th franchise is clearly one of the most iconic in modern horror history. The only problem is, with a sensible head on, the series should have ended at the moment Pamela Voorhees' own head was lopped off towards the conclusion of the very first film. To go back to the franchise's origins, that first Friday the 13th was built around the raw emotion of a mother who felt wronged due to the death of her son. Thus, she channeled her rage and trauma towards a group of teenagers who were in the same position as the counsellors who saw her son die. It was raw, it was powerful, and it was understandable. Again, Jason Voorhees is a horror great, a horror icon in fact, but it's not unfair to say that the Friday the 13th franchise shouldn't have even introduced Jason in any sort of other way than as the dead son Pamela lost. She deserved her own solo movie, as it was originally conceptualised, really. 6. Scream ends with Cotton killing Mrs. Loomis The whole point of the first Scream movie was to poke fun at the overplayed horror genre tropes while simultaneously being a thrill ride of a feature. And while the following three films in the franchise largely stuck to that mantra, the honest opinion would be to say that the Scream series should have come to an end a few minutes before the close of Scream 2. If the Scream franchise halted at the moment where Cotton Weary shoots and kills Debbie Salt, aka Billy Loomis's mother, then that would have been the perfect send-off. There was no need for Mickey to rise from the dead just moments after Mrs. Loomis's death. There was no need for Sydney to put a bullet in the corpse of Mrs. Loomis. Likewise, ending the franchise at this moment would have left a nice sense of ambiguity over the fate of Gail Weathers after she was shot by Mickey. Also, this would have been a great way to close the screen property at two movies, with Cotton being positioned as the hero alongside Neve Campbell's Sydney. Of course, Cotton would ultimately get the praise and props in the actual ending of Scream 2, but that could have been handled just as well by closing the movie 10 minutes earlier. After that, there was whatever you think of Scream 3 and Scream 4 to try and salvage the series a bit. 5. Psycho ends with the first film's big reveal Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho is undoubtedly one of the greatest horror movies ever made. Yet, the Psycho franchise should have ended with about five minutes of the original 1960 movie remaining. Not only did horror fans not need 1983's Psycho 2, 1986's Psycho 3, and 1990's Psycho 4, the beginning, but they also didn't need the whole courthouse scene that plays out at the end of the first flick. 
The Psycho series shouldn't have been a series at all. It should have just been one movie. And that first picture should have ended when Sam and Lila discover the rotten corpse of Norma Bates in the cellar of the Bates Motel. By that point, there is the shocking reveal that Norman has been dressing up as his long-deceased mother, taking on a dual personality in the process and then allowing his mother personality to kill anybody Norman finds attractive. All that was needed was that basement reveal. And then maybe you can skip ahead to the iconic grinning skull shot of a locked-up Norman. But regardless, there was no need for the courtroom antics where a psychiatrist lays out the entire plot in a way that slaps the audience across the face. Nor the follow-ups either. 4. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre ends with the Sawyer family presumed dead. In terms of horror franchises that should have been out of their misery a long, long time ago, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one that realistically should have been stopped after the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. To be a little more on the nose, the series should have concluded when the grenade goes off at the Sawyer family home and leaves our twisted family presumed dead. Regardless of some admittedly enjoyable moments, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 and The Next Generation really don't need to exist. And even in how they exist, they're their own movies in their own skewed timeline that serve as almost an alternate reality. But then, if we're to start analysing the timeline and logistics of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, we'd make ourselves as nuts as Leatherface with all of the questions that come up. Capping the TCM series at 1986's first sequel would allow for those first two films, that actually makes sense as a duo that continues one narrative, to breathe as an overall story centred on the twisted Sawyer family. Not only would that remove any of the confusion caused by the third and fourth instalments in the saga, but we'd also be saved the unneeded antics of The Beginning, Texas Chainsaw 3D and Leatherface. When sequels or prequels throw up more questions than answers, you know you're doing something wrong. And in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, there are so many things wrong once you get past those first two movies. Again, there is still lots of fun to be had with the sequels, and nobody's bashing if you enjoy them, but we're speaking idealistically here. 3. A Nightmare on Elm Street ends with Freddy attacking March Whilst Wes Craven's new nightmare was all kinds of meta fun, and there is some really good things happening in the sequels, the truth is that the Elm Street franchise could have ended after the first movie and had a very strong reputation. Bar some cheesy fun moments in A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, the other sequels are a bit hit and miss and establish a new kind of one-liner Freddy. As such, the perfect time to have called this saga would have been with the closing moments of the 1984 original. Just to keep it scary, at least. After Nancy had banished Freddy by refusing to be scared by him, that first Elm Street movie then saw a twist where Freddy was maybe, or maybe not, alive and chillingly well. And from there, Kruger brutally dragged Nancy's mother Marge through her own front door. Here, my friends, is where the franchise could have ended. At this point in time, Freddy Krueger was a genuinely terrifying character and destined for horror greatness. While Freddy is totally a horror icon of today and one of my personal favourites, A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 was only the start of the merciless killer having his wings taken out from under him as a genuine, scary icon. He has had a wonderful evolution, but how different and far scarier would his legacy be if we had stopped right here? 2. The Omen Ends with Anne Thorne's Pledge of Loyalty there's a very good argument to be made that the Omen franchise shouldn't actually be a franchise at all, and that this property should have been a one-and-done movie whose story ended the moment the credits hit for that first film. To look at things another way, though, the perfect ending for the Omen would seem to be the reveal in Damien Omen 2 that Anne Thorne has been a believer in Damien's satanic ways all along. Anne is the aunt of Damien, and the sequel very much follows the lead of the first Omen movie in how the majority of the picture sees Damien's guardians, his uncle and aunt, Richard and Anne, oblivious to the fact that he's a sneaky little shit who is every inch the devil incarnate. Kids, eh? What Omen 2 does differently to its predecessor, of course, is that it has a twist where Anne was actually aware of Damien's status as the Antichrist all along, to the point that she kills her own husband when it looks like he's about to murder the young Satan. From there, we see Damien cause an explosion that blows up the building and actually kills off Damien's new trusted confidant. By having the Omen franchise end with Anne's murder of her husband, that would have been all that audiences needed. Plus, it maintained Damien's position as a detestable brat, with there being no need for genre fans to necessarily see his ascension to adulthood in Omen 3, The Final Conflict. 
And then the less said about 1991's Omen 4, The Awakening, the better one. Halloween ends with Michael's burning body. From all-time classics to guilty pleasures, the entire 11 Halloween movies to date all hit the spot in their own particular ways. Still, if we're being realistic, the Halloween franchise should have ended in 1981 with Rick Rosenthal's Halloween 2. To be a little more exact, the long-standing saga should have just ended naturally with the film's closing credits. Halloween 2 picked up in the direct aftermath of John Carpenter's legendary 1978 picture. Laurie Strode had been taken to hospital after the traumatic events of that original movie, and Michael Myers was on a mission to hunt her down in her hospital bed. The culmination of the film sees Laurie shoot Michael in the ice, before Sam Loomis blows up both himself and the shape. With this ending for the franchise, there would have been a nice sense of ambiguity to the fates of Loomis, Laurie and Michael, whilst also saving us from the shape engaging in a kung fu battle with Buster Rhymes years later in Halloween Resurrection. God bless this mess.